בוקר טוב, שבוע טוב. Today's staff is staff Kuf Tes in Bamasiyas. We're going to pray in the Kabbalah Shulchan Aruch and the Tzurim Basar Rishiyot. Says the Mishnah from the top of the page of Makabel Sarah Mechaver Lishon and Buatos. If a person leased a field, the lessee leased a field for less than seven years, lo Yisrael Pishton, he shouldn't plant their flax because that takes away a lot of the nutrients. It it um, degrades the land. And it doesn't grow back for seven years. If you took it for seven years, that's okay. Then the first year you can plant flax because it'll grow. The nutrients will replenish themselves within seven years. But if it's less than seven years, he shouldn't plant flax. But in love, of course, shikma. Also, he's not entitled to any standing sycamore trees. To uh, he's not entitled to those beams uh, because um, if he took any, they wouldn't grow back by the time his lease is over. Let's say his lease is a four or five year lease. Avo kibli meno. If he released it for seven years, then Shana Rishana, the first year, he's running fishing, then he could plant with flax because only the first year, because then after seven years, at the end of seven years, the nutrients will replenish himself. The of course, then he's also entitled to the beams of the sycamore trees, which are basically non fruit bearing. But the idea is what do you have on the sycamore trees? You use them for building, for the beams, you cut them down for, for beams. So if you're going to be there for seven years, then they will be, they can regrow. If you cut them down the first year, you'll have when you leave the sycamore trees will have been, uh, but have been replenished. They, new ones will have grown. But if you're there for less than seven years, you're not entitled to those beams. I'm going to bias. So bias is like this. What we're going to talk about today about improvements that the lessee made or the gardeners will see. I'm going to buy Bakar He's not entitled. He's there for less than seven years to the beams of the sycamore trees. But the Shvachi Shikma Yeshlo. So Baha'i says he is entitled, though, to the additional amount that it grew. He took care of the land for five or four, five, six years. And he, uh, you know, he tilled the land, he nourished it, etc. So he's entitled to any improvement in the sycamore trees. Let's say they were uh, a foot thick initially, and later on they grew another six inches. So he's entitled to his share of those those extra six inches he's entitled to that that's the part that he improved so he's entitled to the improvement of the trees Rav says no I feel he's not entitled to that either he's not entitled if he's there for less than seven years and um and uh he's not entitled to the trees nor to the improvement of the trees you're going to try to prove now that you are entitled to the improvement if you lease a field from somebody else and time came now for the lease to be over. Let's say you lease it for three years. Shamalo, they assess for him something that's on the ground that he improved. My love, Shamalo Don't we mean that they assess for him how much the improvement was in the trees? Is low. Shamalo Yarka Vasilka. What we're talking about is we're talking about the vegetables and the beets. That stuff that uh, grew more and that's still in the ground and that's ready almost to be plucked, to, to be harvested. So you are, in other words, if the three years is up, he had planted vegetables and beets, and now he's leaving, so he's entitled to what the vegetables and beets are worth at this point. So it's more Yarkov Silk and that go, what is he? What do you mean you assess for him? Just take them. If the vegetables and the beets have grown, just take them with him. What does he have to assess them? Have them. So the The market day hasn't reached yet, hasn't come. In other words, they're ready to be harvested, but there's no market day yet. So if he if you if you pluck them out, if you harvest them now, they'll go bad by the time the market has come. So you want to leave them in the ground, but you assess for them what they're worth. But we're not talking about, you're not entitled to the improvement in the tree itself, only in the vegetables and stuff that he planted and that are ready to be harvested. Toshma. Man leased a field, and now Shemitah came. Shemelo, you assess for him. Now, Mashma also, we're talking about assessing, are we not talking about assessing the... Uh, the field, the, the trees. So the Gemara says, first of all, what do you mean? Shvius Mika Mafka Ara? Just because it's Shvius, he doesn't have to leave. Uh, the, he doesn't, he's not, he doesn't exit uh, the lease just because of um, of Shvius, right? It's Shvius happens. So he can't plant that year. He can't plant, plant and harvest, but he's entitled, you know, he's not kicked off the land. Ela Ema, I'm a Kabbalist of Yovel. Yovel comes, then comes back to, goes back to the original owner. So the Yeyovo, then Shomelo, you assess for him. So you see from over here that when the man is forced to leave the field at the end of the lease or whenever he has to leave, you assess for him apparently in the trees. Even so, 
just because Yovel came along, if a person has a lease on a land, what does Yovel do? Yovel says that whoever bought the land during the last 50 years, it goes back to the original owner. But if a man leased it, he's still entitled to the lease. He may not just pays the other owner, but he's entitled to what he leased. But it's some Rachmana. It's only, Yovel only takes effect where if it wouldn't be for Yovel, it would be in perpetuity to the, it would, it would stay in perpetuity to the person who bought it. But here we're not talking about in perpetuity. We're talking about they had to lease it for X number of years. So it doesn't affect him any, anyway. So it can't mean that we can't talk about an assessment of Shvius because he doesn't have to leave, nor does he have to leave when it comes to Yovel. If a man bought a field, not if he leased a field. If he leased a field, then Shvius or Yovel would not interrupt his, his lease. Here we're talking about a man bought a field, the Gia, Yovel, and Yovel came. Now, when you bought a field and Yovel comes, you got to give it back. Shamalo, you assess for him. Oh, so does that mean also you assess the tree? And this would be, you assess the improvement in the tree, and that we go against Rubbo, who says he doesn't get that assessment. Here also, maybe it means vegetables and uh, beets. That's what you assess for him because they're still on the ground. So, what do you mean you assess for him? During Yovel, those items are are uh, hefker. They're, they're ownerless. Anybody can come and take them. So what do you mean you assess for him? Then he's on a talzum. El alav, shvach shikma, so it means must be. You assess for him the improvement in the standing sycamore trees that are there. And that when Yovo comes along, uh, he's he's given that value. So that shows you that that he, there is an assessment, not like Rava says. Just talking about Baya, Libra Rava, so Baya explained according to Rava, shiny yasin dharmakar, the Pusik says, Yatsa mim karbayas, right? The yatsa mim karbayas, and the sale of the house will go out. Mim karchoser shvach ena choser. That's a dip. That's that's a uh, a special case. There it says that the sale goes back. The shvach does not go back. So over here, uh, it says over that you assess for him. It says so. It says shvach ena choser, meaning the sale of the property goes back to the original owner, but the shvach does not. So that's a special case because. The, in that case, Enochanami, the person who bought a field and comes to the Yobel, he's entitled to the improvements. He, go, he gives back the field, but the improvements don't have to go back to the original and that he gets to keep. So, why don't you learn out from there? Just like over there, the person who bought the field uh, is entitled to keep the improvements when it comes to Yobel. The same thing with a, with a lessee. So the possum is being value. There, it's a, it's a good sale. The Yobel, Afghan Amalki. There, it's a, it's a sale. The man did buy it, it's his. Except Yobel comes along, and Yobel is like a royal uh, withdrawal. Hashem, uh, uh, yeah, before Afghan Malka, it's a royal, uh, um, you know, um, removal of, of ownership, right? He took it away. The, the, the Torah, Hashem took it away, but normally it's not, uh, uh, you know, Hashem and know your ownership in it. But um, so there we say that Hashem took away your ownership in the field, but any improvements that you made, you're entitled to. But in the case of a lessee, we don't necessarily say that. Rapapa Kibala Rapapa leased a field, a spasta for fodder, for growing fodder, growing straw, whatever, growing uh, uh, animal food. All of a sudden, some trees sprout up, some uh, trees sprout up in the area. He, he, took, he took this field, uh, he let, leased it in order to grow, to grow uh, produce there. And uh, some trees sprout up. Kikamastalik. When he was leaving the lease, when his lease was over, Amalu, he told the owners, give me the improvement that I made in the field. Um, in other words, including those trees. If it was already a palm tree there, and it got thicker, got stronger, like we just talked about in the Mishnah uh, and, and the Gemara about the uh, improvement in a sycamore tree, uh, would you also expect to get that improvement also? You, you leased it for fruit. I didn't go down to the field for the improvement in the trees. Uh, there, right there, here, there, I went down for, uh, for I, I, I leased the field in order to gain the fruits. I didn't go down, I didn't go into the field to get the improvement in the trees. I leased it for the fruits. I didn't go in. Here, I went into the field in order uh, to grow stuff, whatever I grew, grew. I grew fodder. Also, some trees grew. Uh, some trees grew there, so I'm entitled to that too. 
Kaman Kabai, does that mean he goes like a Baidam Bishvah Shikma Yeshlo? Does that mean to say that he's going like a Baya who said the Mahlok Zabaya Rav usually go like Rava? Here we go like we only pass like a Baya in six cases, Yal Kagam. Are you going like a Baya who said that uh you're entitled to the improvement in the sycamore? Um to even go like Rav who says you're not entitled to the improvement in the standing trees. Hasam less late say that there, right? There's no loss to the lessee, right? He's not losing anything. You rented a, you leased a field. And in that field, you were there for five years. You didn't cut down the sycamore tree because if you cut it down, you'd have to make, you'd have to pay for it. It's not going to grow back in five years, but the tree got thicker. So you didn't, didn't cause you any loss. You leased the field and there happened to be some trees there that grew stronger during your five years. There's no loss to you. But here, here, when you lease the field to grow fodder, there is a loss. What's the loss? I'm said, for what loss have I caused you? Yada das pasta, the area that I could have planted more fodder. Uh, uh, the, w- what's your loss? The the area of the fodder, meaning you rented the field, you leased the field to grow fodder. All of a sudden, some trees grew up there too. Okay, so what do you want? You want the money for the area of the, the value of more fodder that could have been grown where those trees sprouted up? Shkol yada the pasta, right? Okay, fine. You, you, he was asking, Rapub was asking for the value apparently of the trees, right? He, was like, he says, give me the improvement. Mashma, he wanted like the trees. I got I put new trees over here that grew up during my uh to, during my lease, grew these trees. He says, well, what do you mean? You didn't go in for the trees, you grew to grow fodder. Okay, fine. I could have grown more fodder where those trees sprouted up. All right, so take the area of the fodder, whatever more fodder could have been grown, I'll give you that, the zill and go. I'm only I not quirk and I could have planted um I could have planted garden saffron as we had before. before. I could have been good, expensive stuff. In that area that the true trees grew, I could have planted expensive stuff. On Malaysia, he said, oh, Galisa, that's what you've shown there. Your only purpose was to take whatever you could have grown. Okay, take the value, whatever whatever the area, whatever the square footage was of the, um, of the trees that sprouted up, you're not going to get the value of new trees. You're saying that those trees sprouted up where you were growing produce, be it fodder, be it a garden saffron. Okay, so we'll take the most expensive vegetables that you could have grown in that area. How much could they, how much in that area that the trees took up could they have grown? And we'll give you that value. You're only entitled to, suppose, speak, the value of the wood, meaning what could have been grown in that spot uh, of those trees. You're not entitled to the long term improvement of trees, like you, new trees sprouted up there. Okay, so what do you want? The value of trees? Whatever could have grown there, like the value of the wood or the value of the saffron, that's what you're entitled to. Rabbi Bibar, buy a couple of Arab bottle, Rabbi Bibar had uh, leased a field and he built around it like a fence. Mishanis is like a fence, like a ridge of uh, vegetables or whatever, or some uh, bushes that he grew around there. Katchu be zarsa, zarsa. Zarsa is who's right, crab apples. You live on that block, right? Uh, crab apples, grew, uh, a, a, some crab apple trees grew on those ridges. Kikam Salak, when he left the field, when the lease was over, I'm a little you mean the improvement I made. I'm a poppy, so a poppy said to Rabibi, who was the son of Abaya, Abaya and Rabba both emanated from Ali, who was cursed with a short life for all his descendants. I'm a poppy, because you come from Muloim. Muloim is either the place that they were from, or it means like people who were cut off, people who weren't good. Amisa Milan Milai, so you bring up, you bring down, cut off, you say words. Doesn't make any sense what you're saying. You're demanding that these uh, Uzra trees that grew up on your ridge that you built as a fence, you want their value. I feel a Rapapa, Rapapa, who demanded something when he leased, he demanded, look, I grew, I leased this field to grow fodder. I could have grown garden sap or something else, and some trees sprouted out there. I wanted. I want the value of the trees. They said, "Listen, you know, you're not going to get the value of new trees. We'll give you what you could have grown over there, ready to take out, not the value of trees, which are going to be there for a long time. But whatever you could have grown, uh, garden saffron or whatever could have grown during that time, the value that we're going to give you, because there was some loss, right? The trees grew where you could have planted uh, produce." Here, you built a ridge around the field for protection, for Shmira. And some apples, some uh, Uzra trees grew on that. There's no loss to you over there. 
you're not, it's not like you were planting in that area anyway, so there's no loss to you. Reb Yosef Havile, uh, we're at the two dots, about two thirds of the way down the page. Reb Yosef Havile, Ushislo, he had a gardener. Now, we've talked about sharecroppers, right? Uh, sharecroppers and auras, who usually takes a percentage, right? Sometimes it's uh, 25%, 20, 30, 40%. In general, let's say they get a third. They get a third of the pros. But if you have a gardener, a gardener here, a shisla means a gardener. Here, he uh, he planted everything. He put his own expenses in, etc. He planted everything, and he's entitled usually to half. That's usually the rule. Say to shisla, Rashi says, right where the lines get wide, before they get wide, they'll take care of the all bias. He says, I'll come in, I'll, I'll do the whole thing. I'll plant the vineyard here and everything. And... Um, and he's entitled, he's also a sharecropper there, but he's more than a, share, a sharecropper usually comes in and he takes over what's there already. But a shisla gardener comes in and he plants everything and he gets half. Whereas, so we'll say that a uh, a gardener, a shisla gets half, whereas an aris gets usually a third. So Joseph Havali a shisla, he had a gardener, shachem, and the gardener died. Now, he, the gardener had like a long-term deal. That's the gardener wasn't sound like a gardener, like we hire a gardener today and we fire him tomorrow. He had a uh, he had like a long-term lease that he's entitled to half the produce over here. That's his, uh, that's, it's, it's a deal. It's not simply you're hired like, you know, for 50 shekels to uh, trim the bushes and leave. He had a, he had a deal. He's entitled to 50%. He died. Uh, uh, he left over five sons-in-law. <laughs> It's like the uh, they were masped somebody. You know, they said that in Yiddish, he said that azim mitfir aidim. He left over a son and four sons-in-law. You know, he doesn't mention the girls, right? The daughters, right? So here, this this shisla, uh, this uh, gardener left over five sons-in-law. Now, the owner was a smart guy. Omar, he said, listen, adedna chad. Told me now I had one guy to deal with. He was my gardener, right? We had a deal, fifty percent. Hashda Hamishan, I got five guys to deal with, the sons-in-law, right? I don't it, not until now. Well, I was some chadari. There was nobody to rely on. They had he had to take care of himself. He was the sole gardener. Well, I missed it. They didn't cause me any loss. Hashda Hamishan, some chadari missed it. In other words, when you have more than one person, nobody's responsible, right? Whatever Rabbi Wine always tells the story with a small European town, they had exactly ten families. There was no, you know, you couldn't miss davening because there was exactly 10 men showed up every day. If you slept in or you, you got sick, there was no minion. One day, the God, God blessed the city and a new family moved into town. The next day, no minion. <laughs> there was no minion. Oh, let him come, right? When you rely on other people, right? When there's more than one person, that's exactly what happened over here. When the owner knew he had a gardener, the gardener was responsible. He didn't rely on anybody else. He caused me a loss. Now I got five sons-in-law, you know, besides the fact that the sons-in-law figure they don't have to do too much, you know, uh, they were entitled to it, right? So he didn't want them. Amr Louis told them, If you take your improvement, you're entitled to your improvement. Let's say 50%. We're going to deal with that. We're going to cut that down a little bit. But let's say they're basically entitled to 50% and you'll be fine. Take your stuff and get out. I, I'll get somebody new. Elo, if you don't, if you don't agree, I'll evict you without any improvement. I'm just going to evict you as it is. I'm gonna, we're going to, I'm going to quit the lease right now. Uh, if you have a gardener, the shach who dies, his 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 uh his heirs, you can kick him out without paying him anything. The owner, the the father, the the uh, gardener was entitled. But his heirs are not entitled. But the Marsavalab will say that's not true. You have to give them a shvach. So they, they, they are his heirs. If he died, uh, they're entitled to get what he was entitled to get. Okay. So he says, like, but I I'll give you, I'll give you your pay, I'll give you what you're entitled to, and get out. I don't want to be partners with five sons in law. I wish just another story, I wish just a Darmalu. The gardener said, Imaf Sidna Misalka, if I cause you any loss, I'll leave. If he caused any loss, I'm, I'm going to leave. If said, he caused loss. So he didn't, uh, he did deal with the land properly, he caused loss. I'm Rabbi Yudah. You can kick him out without even giving him whatever improvement he had done. He had done some improvement. Now he was causing a loss. So Rabbi says, you can kick him out without giving him any improvement. You can kick him out, you can evict him, but 
um, you have to give him the shvach. A motor of Kana, Kana's motor, the Eomer, if he said, I pasidna mistanka, if I cause you a loss, I will leave below shvach without taking any any improvement. Mistanka lo shvach, you can't come out of any shvach. Rabbi says, no. Rabbi says, asmachti, when a person says, I'm so sure of my work that I will, I guarantee, I guarantee the work that if I cause any loss, I'll leave and I won't even take what I'm entitled to. That's simply, Rav Kana takes him literally. Rabbi says, no, that's an asmachti. It's an, an assur- assurance, like a bet. You know, he doesn't mean it seriously. Asmachti, asmachti lo kanya, and he's entitled to the shvach, even if he said, I won't take the shvach if I cause the loss. So Rabbi, according to Rabbi, who says he's not a talim, how is this different with this that we learned before? When a man says, I'm over below Avon, I'm going to lease this land. And if I let it go fallow when I don't work the land, I will pay you the best anyway. Meaning he leased the land and he's got to pay out of the, out of the crops. And if he doesn't, do, if there's nothing to pay with, he still has to pay. He says, might have some shams. He's got to pay for the loss that he caused. You're right, over here also. Whatever loss he caused, we deduct. In other words, in a case where you leased a field and didn't produce anything, Right, so how are you going to pay the lease? Obviously, you have to pay out of the best. Or if you were a sharecropper, you got to pay what it would have produced. What it would have produced, you caused that loss over here too. It's the same thing. Even according to Rabba, when he says that it's smart Kanya, yeah, but you are deducting for whatever losses he had. But whatever improvement there was there, he's entitled to. Runya, that was his name, Shisla. Shisla, Rabina, he was Lavina's gardener. If said, and he caused a loss. Salke, so Rabina fired him. Kicked him out. Also came to came for a rubber, and they had a fight. Amalei, so Runya said to Rubba, Chazi Mamraka, look what he did. He fired me. For no cause, he clicked, right? No cause. Amalei, shop, there is cause. He did. You, you ruined this field. You, until you caused some losses. Amalei, hello, Ashubi. I didn't get a warning. You know, today you have a thing called a Shimua. You're entitled to a hearing, right? You're entitled to warnings and hearings and you know, like in, you got to give him a yellow card and a red card, and you got to give him a warning. Hello, Asri. I'm a lay, Asrifi, that's last. You don't have to give you a warning for that because that's understood. Rubble to me, Rubble goes according to his reason. Rubble, there are certain fields which it's understood in advance that if they're going to make trouble, they're, they're forewarned already. Mikri Dardiki, a school teacher who teaches children Chumash, Rashi says if you teach them wrong, uh, you know, once it gets into their head that way, that's it. Tosa says not because they, they can still be improved, but if you teach them wrong, you wasted their time with the, you could have taught them Torah. These are things that are not recoverable. Uh, you can't take back, you know, in Yiddish, you say, you can't get yesterday back. Whatever you wasted the kid's time with, it's no good. She's just the gardener, you ruined the field. How are you going to get it back? You could, from now, you could, you could do new stuff, but what you lost that time. Top a butcher, right? A, a shofi. Umna. Umna is either a moel or a uh, copper, you know, the uh, dr- uh, person who draws blood, uh, these things, if they mess up, you know, uh, they're, they're forewarned. Uh, the sapper masa, the sapper masa is either the barber or the town scribe. Either way, kulan kumutarmba, kumutarmdamdam, they're all, they're all like forewarned. It's as if they've been forewarned. If they mess up, you're entitled to kick them out or, you know, punish them uh, without uh, recourse, and they have no claim that I wasn't warned. Both mostly the general rules, compensated the law, any loss which cannot be recovered, uh, it's as if they've been forewarned. So they know in those fields that they shouldn't, and therefore he was entitled to be kicked out. The, the more does describe in Runya's case over here, if he got the shvach, he didn't get the shvach. According to Rav Kana, uh, according to Rav Kana, even according to Rav, he's entitled to the shvach, he's entitled to the shvach, but it's mash, he's entitled to whatever uh, improvements he had made. That's a good reason. Uh, a gardener said, give me my pay, my, my shvach, the improvement that I made. I want my 50%, right? Because we said before that a shisla, a gardener who built the garden, etc., the vineyard, he's entitled to So he said, listen, I like my money. I'm making aliyah. Pay me now so I can, you know, you can't come to Eretz Yisrael with nothing. So he came, I wanted to make aliyah and, um, and, pay, and give me my money. Also came Rapapa, so Bashmu, so it was a fight. Uh, Rapapa Bashmu came for Rapa Shmuel, well, who, Hava Lashvach, give him Shvach, what's your problem? He's leaving, he's entitled to uh, to his to the improvements that he made. Omele Rava, Iu Ashbach, Aralo Ashbach. So Rava said to him, 
right? Uh, they would say, this is what Rav said now to, apparently to Rav Papa Bar Shmuel, what do you mean? He made the improvement, didn't the land also make the improvement? What do you mean that he's entitled? It, it, was, it was the owner's land. Besides the fact that, you know, they're supposed to split the produce 50-50, but it was my land that, 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 that improved it. Didn't I not improve it? I'm like, I know Palga de Shvacha, I know Palga de Shvacha Kamina. Okay. Um, so uh, I, he says, no, I meant half of the improvement that I made, not the entire amount. You can keep half. I'm like, I didn't have a Shaka Palabai, it's Palga, it's just the Palga. Now, so wait a minute. Okay. So he says, give me all the Shvachas. What do you mean? Didn't the land improvement, meaning my share also, I improved it, it was my land. He says, no, I only meant half, the half that I'm entitled to, as we said before, that, you know, I'm entitled to half, that, this, that a gardener is entitled to half. Okay, so so the owner said, or, or Rubber was defending maybe the Balabais. He said, look, until now, the Balabais got half and the gardener took half. Ashta boy the mace of Minsla Risa. Now what's the what's the owner gonna do now with the field? Now he's gonna have to hire a sharecropper. The uh, true, the gardener is the one who built the uh, you know, started it, he started the the vineyard or the or the uh, orchard, whatever it was. He started and he's entitled to 50% of the improvement, right? So he's entitled to 50%. But now the owner says, Yeah, I was getting 50% till now, but who's gonna take care of it now? Now I have to hire an Arisa sharecropper. And he's going to take a third. So I'm going to come out with less than 50%. That's what he says now. Hashta boil the mesa min salarisa. He says, no, I didn't even mean 50% of everything. Rivet the shvacha kamina. I meant a quarter. I meant a quarter of the whole thing. Okay. So what does it mean, a quarter of the whole thing? So, savar of ashilamema, riva de hudanka, meant to say this a quarter of what was left which is really a sixth of the whole thing. So Rashi gives an example. Let's say we're talking about the improvement was $6. $6, right? $6. So now, how much would you say each one would get? Normally the owner would get $3 and the, and the, and the gardener would get $3. That's how you would say. But he says, no, I meant, I meant uh, a quarter. He says, I, I didn't mean I'm going to take half. I'm going to take a quarter. Okay. But if he gets a quarter... If he gets a quarter of the whole thing, so what happens over here? The whole thing is six dinners, right? Now, if he, yeah, if he, if the whole improvement is six dinners, if the he's gonna have to pay an oris now a third of that, what's gonna what is he gonna give a third? A third of six is two. Two dollars goes to the oris, right? Uh, and um, uh, and um, if he's gonna give half of it to the to the gardener. That's three. The guy's only going to be left with one. So he says, no, 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 no. It's not like that. I'm not saying that I'm going to take half and you're going to give a third and you're going to be left with one dollar. I'm going to get three. No, no, no. Riva Dudanka. I meant a quarter, listen carefully, of what was left. Meaning, what was left? What was left to the to the um, uh, to the to the owner? Okay, so if you take the six, right, you take the six dollars, and um, he has to give he has to give a third of it to to the artist that he's going to hire now. So how much is left in the field? Four, right? There's, there's six dollars of improvement there. Six dollars, right? A third now they're going to have to give to the to the artist, the sharecropper who's going to come in and take care of it. All that's left is four. So now the um, uh, the gardener who's who's leaving Terrence Israel and wants to share. He's really only going to get a quarter of the four, right? Two, two, two dollars worth is going to go to the Aris out of the six dollars of improvement. Two dollars is going to go, and four dollars is left. Out of the four dollars, the, the, the garden says, I'll take one dollar. One dollar. So when he said a quarter, he doesn't mean a quarter of the six dollars, the whole amount. He meant a quarter of what's left after you pay the Aris, which is one dollar out of four dollars. Okay. Okay, River Hudanka, which is a sixth of the whole improvement, right? The whole improvement was six dollars, right? So he's saying when he says a quarter, a quarter doesn't mean I didn't mean uh as a Ravash he says he didn't mean a quarter of the whole improvement, which would be a dollar and a half. He meant a quarter of what was left after you paid the Aris who's gonna take over the field now. 
after you pay the Oris two, all you're left with is four, and he's going to take a quarter there, which is one dollar. Dumra Ban Yumi Grade, Rav Nahumi, he says the following, the Asri Shakal Shisla, Halga, in a place, an area where the gardener takes half, but Risa Tilsa, and like we said, the sharecropper takes a third. I Shisla, the boy, let's look. If the, if the gardener wants to be uh, either, either he wants to quit or you want to uh, evict him, you give him his shvach, and you leave him. You give it in a way that the, that the owner will not lose. You understand? The owner's not going to lose now. Why? Because the sharecropper, out of the $6 of improvement, the sharecropper is going to get two. The gardener will get, the, the shisla will get one, right? We said, which is a quarter, a quarter of what's that? And the balabais gets his half, right? He the balabais. Yeah, I'm a bitch on the river. Now, if river do, don't, if you say that the quarter is the quarter of the net amount that's left after the shisla, which is a sixth of the whole amount chopper, Aliyam at river mamish, if he gets literally a quarter, listen carefully, if he gets literally a quarter, so which means how much is a quarter of six? One and a half, right? So if the if the um if the shisla gets one and if the gardener gets one and a half and two Two dollars goes to the new artist who comes in. That's a total of three and a half, and therefore the owner only gets two and a half, right? Out of six, three and a half is gone. He only gets two and a half. It's going to cost less. my river mamish come out to the say to the bias. Paul good, Paul How much has he lost out? He's lost out a half of a six, which is, means he's a half. A half a dollar is one twelfth, or a half of six. A half of, of a six is one twelfth, and he lost a half a dollar. That's what he's going to lose out. Listen to this. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're saying that the Shisla, the gardener who put his blood and tears into that garden, he's going to wind up with one dollar and the other guy's going to get three. He says, the, the gardener can now say, listen, wait a minute. I'm leaving. What, what, what is your problem? That I, I'm entitled to leave. You know, you, not, I'm not a slave. I'm entitled to leave. I'm making I'm making all the out. I'm entitled to my to my day. What are you saying? You're going to have to hire an artist. Oh, hold on a second. You don't have to hire an Oris for my share, right? For my share. My share, I can do whatever I want with it. I'm entitled to my to my produce, whatever the whatever my share is. What why do I have to why do you have to have an Oris on my share? You have an Oris on your share, right? On your share, right? So Malay and You can give your share to the Oris. And I will take my share. My I'll do whatever I want with it. It's none of my business. Omar, he says, it's a good point. So he answered him. In other words, this was a point. Rav Achav, Rav Yosef said to Rav Ashi, you say what? That the when he said, I'll take a quarter, really means a sixth of the whole improvement because otherwise the owner will have a, a, a loss. No, that's not the case. You don't have to give him, uh, he's not entitled to only a sixth of the improvement. He's entitled to a full quarter of the improvement. Why? Because the what's what's a quarter going to be? One and a half dollars out of the six, right? What are you saying that the uh, that the owner's going to have to pay two dollars to the new artist? No, he doesn't pay two dollars. He only has to pay a third of how much of what remains after this guy takes a quarter, a third of four and a half. So therefore, it's going to come out that that's not my problem. And therefore, he's entitled to a full quarter. Why um, the no, no. The the owner will have to pay the artist uh, to take care of his field. Of what is going to uh, no, no. Of what's on the field now. Of, he, right. But because he, he has to take care of the field, he has to he has to till the field, harvest it. He has to take care of it. We have to pay the third. But... <laughs> no, no. So that's what he's saying. He's saying that's what his loss is going to be. In other words. You're talking about the Sheva, talking about the Shvach, the Shvach, yeah. Talking about the Shvach. The Shvach is going to be, the Shavach is going to be uh, whatever it is. We talked about it being $6, and we said, so Ravashi said, no, the owner, the artist is only going to get $1, because otherwise the other guy won't get his three. No, he says the artist, the, the, the Shisla, the gardener could tell him, I have nothing to do with this uh, artist. You, you have the artist for your share, not for my share. Therefore, your loss is not $2. You're not $2. It's not it's not two out of the uh, six. It's only two out of what I takes after after I leave. It's only a third out of the four and a half. Therefore, your loss is uh, is not my problem, and he's entitled to a full quarter. But I'm going to say, my debate is in the back. Omar, Omar, let's just finish. So let's finish the dialogue. Omar, so he said, So this is a good, good spar. It's a good answer, right? You 
you, uh, the, the, the gardener doesn't have to pay for the artist taking care of the Balabayas' property. So Amr Kimatas, when we get to learn Kachim, right now we're still in the Zikin. We get to Shechitas Kachim, which is Masechet Svachim. Remember, we said many times, Rashi goes here, Rashi refers to it as Svachim. He says, he says that uh, you're, you're real smart, and, and you're real smart. And when we get to Masechet Svachim, which is Shechitas Kachim, uh, the, the Gemara calls Kulin Shechitas Kulin, and Svachim is called Shechitas Kachim. We get to Masechet Tava actually come and uh, you know, you can ask me a lot of questions. I see you're real smart. Meaning he accepted. Rashi says one shot in Rashi is that he was just, you know, pushing him off and said, oh, you're a smart aleck. But he didn't agree. But it's from Rashi that he did agree. That is, that he raised a good point. And therefore, when he said, when the Shisla said, I'm entitled to a quarter, he meant really a quarter. When the Shisla said, give me my share, they rather defended him. First, we said half. Half isn't good enough because he has to pay the auras. Right to let's say to harvest the field to finish. He had to finish the job that the 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 gardener was leaving. He did improve the field, but it had to be finished. So the artist you have to pay a third, but only a third of the share that goes to the balabayit. Therefore, the artist is entitled to his quarter. In a place where you pay the uh, the gardener half and you pay the sharecropper, uh, you pay the sharecropper a third. I just the boy is looking at a, 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 a gardener that that you want to uh, uh, dismiss. Yeah, you give him a shvach and you 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 kick him out. If the lifts the balbais, but you got to do it in a way that the balbais doesn't lose out. In other words, you don't give him a full third uh, or full half rather. You don't give him a half. We said you give him a quarter. You give him a quarter, but a quarter could be of the whole amount of the improvement, as as they answered Ravashi. So the idea of here is that if something is taken to its fruition, meaning till the end, then you split it. So if you have, let's say, old vines that are you know, dried out, it was normal for them to finish up, then they split it 50-50. Shut an hour river. But if, let's say, they quit in middle, where there's still more work to be done, but didn't take it all the way to its end, and it only gets a quarter, like we said over here in the case of the Shisla. The Shisla normally is entitled to 50% if Let's say they did the whole thing. He, he planted it, he tilled it, he took care of it, he, he weeded it, and he harvested it. Now you have the fruits, he split it 50-50. But if something happened in the middle, like he quit, he quit. He says, I want to improve whatever I did till now. Fine, okay, you can quit. But I still have to pay a sharecropper to finish the job, and he gets a third. So you have to work it out that the owner doesn't lose out. So he said he could take a quarter, he could take a quarter, because then the owner won't lose out. So that, that's what we say. So if something went, so to speak, to fruition, you carried out all the way to harvest time, they split it 50-50. But if something happened in the middle, he quit, or there was an act of God, like the the uh, um, the river, uh, you know, the, the river uh, overflowed, right, and uh, and caused damage and stopped in the middle, then he's only entitled to quarter because it wasn't finished. Who gave the mashkin for this a man gave a mashkin, he gave his field as a mortgage to, uh, to the uh, person that he lent money, that he borrowed money from, last session for 10 years. Okay, so now the Malva had the field for 10 years and he was entitled to eat the fruits thereof. Either a Mashkanta, the sewer, where I'm on the field for 10 years and afterwards the loan is paid off, or he deducted for every year, let's say, uh, you could do it that way. It's not really because he deducted, let's say, the loan was $1,000 for 10 years. I'm going to stay in the land, I'm going to eat the fruits, and every year I'll deduct $100. Either way, that's halachically okay. But what happened to Kashla Khameshana after five years it dried up. Now drying up, Rashi says, this man, in other words, it was it was an old uh, field, the trees, whatever it was, an orchard, and it's right after five years. If I am a payro, if I says, listen, it's it's finished and you're entitled to eat the payros, and he's entitled to uh, the payros, meaning the Malva can can sell the uh, can sell whatever's left in the orchard and keep the money. Rabbi says, no, Karna, it's part of the principle. You left the, as a principle, you can't consume all its principle. So what you do is sell it, kind of the electrum and Karka, buy, take this, whatever's left over these, this orchard that's dried up, uh, sell it, buy some land. We will help us need to pay. So let's continue on with the lease and with this um, mortgage. Question is, is the orchard that dried up, is it like payros, meaning it's gone to fruition till it can't be uh, anymore, and as payros, the, the uh, Malva, the mortgagee, is entitled to the Paris, or 
do you say that it's like a principle which should not be consumed? So here we have machlokas to buy rubber, right? A buyer, this is a, a buyer says, uh, it's Rambam's uh, say from here is on, is on uh, a buyer, but I, I don't, I'm don't, i not sure if this is, this is not one of the six cases I think that we pass like a buyer, so we'll have to look that up. Um, it's Meisvei, Yavash Elon. Oh, Nixas, Nixas Shnei Masrimbo. Let's say even Malv and Aloba, and the the tree that he had used as a mortgage dried up or was cut down. Neither one, the Malv and Aloba, are not entitled to take it because it will consume it. Kesia, what should you do? You must sell the sell the tree uh, for wood. You can buy cotton with it through Ochel Paris, and the Malv will continue. The mortgage will continue to Paris. My love, Yavesh Dumi Nixas isn't dried up the same as cutting down. Now, when you cut down a tree, you cut it down a tree when it's when it's finished, when it can't uh, do anything anymore. Uh, you only cut it down at the end. So isn't it just like the oven? It's just like it's gone to it's it's dried up, meaning it's it's come to its natural end. My next is bismano, just like your next, you cut it down bismano when it's finished, when it no longer has any purpose. Even though it's finished, you still should not eat up the principal, meaning the principal, it's considered principal, not payros. And the uh, Malva is not entitled to them. So this is a proof to Rava that it's Karen and not, and it's not payros. It says, look, say cutting down is comparable to Yavish where it dried, my Yavish below is man, it dried up early. I speak my word was early. When it was early, oh, then it's like, He's only then it's uh, not then then it's uh, considered like principal because it's it's only payrus if it went to fruition if you you carried it out or, 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 or finished off at harvest time you either dry it naturally or you harvested it then it's payrus otherwise it's principal so it's not a kasha on a buyer touch my another proof let's say a man or woman were married and after they were married the sibyl was already done they were already married uh, she had a death in her family and um, she inherited. Some vines, enough uh, like fond of the or all trees, canem, old ones. It's mashma push up shot that they that they uh that this canem meaning that they had dried up. So see machru leitzim. So over here now, a husband's entitled to eat the peros of his wife to the same look. If it's peros, he's entitled to eat them. Instead, you say no. They have to be sold. You machle. You have to sell them for wood. We can buy karkam by karkam with the meaning maintain the principle. Uh, who also pairs he can eat the pairs of that, but he can't eat the tree, he can't take the trees themselves and the uh, the uh, olives and the, the olive and the vine, the olive trees and the, and the vines and eat it all up right there. He must buy cargo with it. So you see that it's Karen, and so you see that it's Karen and not and not uh, payros again. It's a cash on a vice aim of his kinu. Don't say that uh, they grew, they died naturally, but rather suddenly, uh, suddenly it came upon him, and blows him out. In other words, they dried up early. They dried up early, then even on a bias moda, then it's uh principal and you shouldn't uh you shouldn't eat the pairs. So you say, you can say, Love me, can, didn't we explain that case also? Lee, don't you enough look the son of Harris? The tree the tree that she that fell, these trees that fell to her fell into somebody else's field. So the Kakalia Karna over here, then she'll have nothing left. In other words, he's entitled to eat Paris and she keeps the Karen. But over here, if she doesn't even own the land, she only got trees in somebody else's field. If you wouldn't buy uh, other, if you wouldn't buy land with the value of the, with this wood that dried up, if you wouldn't buy land with it and you would just consume everything, she would have nothing left. And therefore, he's entitled to Paris, but only if he doesn't consume the principal. But he consumes one, so you can't. And over here, it's speaking about if he would have eaten up the trees, meaning he wouldn't have bought other land with it, he would have eaten up the principal. So then even a buy his motor in that case, we have to check that last one. All right, we'll pick from here tomorrow. It's Shem from the two dots. Have a good day. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.